Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah. Uh, as you guys already heard from Ed, their open source is uh, rather important to uh, pin cap and uh, uh, its, uh, uh, its customers, right? I would argue also uh, a lot of uh, success of TidyB was due to the open source, especially in the early stage as it happens when you, you know, can't buy all of those, you know, marketing and Super Bowl ads and so on and so forth, right? So I think that's very fitting for me to come and talk uh, to you about their uh, open source. Now, with that, let me start by mentioning my background because I think it's going to frame what I'm going to talk about in the right way. I've been in all involved in open source since late 90s, what, like 25 years ago? Oh my gosh, I feel so old now. Uh, I was an early staff member of uh, MySQL uh, IB, and uh, for almost last two decades, I was founder and until recently CEO of Percona, a company which specializes in open source databases. And also beyond that, I'm involved a lot in open source ecosystem as general, as investor, uh, mentor, mentor, open source advocates, uh, speaking at conferences and mm, awards. Now, with that, uh, my main uh, approach to open source of thinking about open source was when you think about everything being equal, open source is a better choice, right? And I think that is a better choice uh, for users uh, as well as uh, uh, for uh, the world as a co as uh, all, right? And what that means is for you as an open source uh, user, right, or general technology user, it really is a good uh, choice to invest in open source technologies. Invest your money, invest your time, because you know what? If you invest in open source, right, wherever it is, uh, right, then you get to benefit from that investment. And if you spend money on, say, let's Oracle, guess what happens? Larry gets to have a bigger boat. Well, not like uh, he needs one. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, now, before we go to the state of open source that it is right now, I wanted to very briefly cover the history of open source, which I like to think about as happening in like a free, kind of uh, free period. One, which we don't often think about, what I will call like emerging open source, right, is way back, right? Because few people know what the open source was actually, while it wasn't called open source at that time, that was original way how the software was done and distributed, right? If you imagine the first computers, well, guess what? The value was in the hardware, and things were also, also early stage, so buggy, you wanted your customers to be able to see their code, help you to debug the problems and fix them, right? So the source uh, was uh, available and often shared according to the academic principle sharing the, uh, sharing, uh, uh, the knowledge. Now fast forward, if you think about an 80s and 90s, I think you had this kind of romantic era of your, uh, of your open source. Right, where you often would, uh, would think about, hey, the open source is a cool well to develop stuff, you have a community sharing, and uh, so on and so forth, right? Here is uh, Richard Stallman, which is a well-known, uh, you know, thought leaders of, of uh, that time. And by the way, he prefers the terms of a free software, not the open source, but you know what? I'm using the open source term because I think if overall that term won, uh, sort of recognition compared to uh, to free software, even though the values of those uh, names are quite uh, similar. Now, if you think about 2000 plus, that is where things got serious, right? We could see about those, you know, finance uh, famous uh, quotes about folks at uh, uh, Microsoft uh, noticing Linux, uh, right? Or also some significant outcomes, like uh, Sun was acquired MySQL for a billion dollars, right? Now a billion dollars probably doesn't look like an interesting exit for open source company, right? But at that time, the billion with a B, that was huge, right? Well, uh, uh, different times, right? 
So I think from the last 20 years, uh, we saw the open source in the mm, uh, larger commercial era. And what that means is what a lot of people build an open source, not in what Linus Torvalds would say, just for fun, right? But more about, hey, that is actually a very good way to uh, build a business, raise the money, and uh, so on and so forth. But that actually also brings us some conflicts, conflicts of the goals uh, between the you know, kind of like original and sometimes romantic open source movement as well as what does it take to be a successful business, right? What do we teach you in the business school, right? Hey, well, make sure you have defensible mode, right? You kind of make sure your customers are, uh, have a stickiness, right? And they have no other choice and have nowhere to run so you can uh, leverage, right? And, uh, well, uh, to get uh, money, right? So uh, I think that is a very interesting kind of uh, recognition, uh, right? And that is, I think, is the reason why we often see while a lot of uh, companies, they love open source to start because that's sort of like a marketing advantage it gives uh, in an early stage, then they often don't quite like it too much later on, right? That is why a lot of companies, when they have to pursue their shareholder value, right, that kind of over time erodes their open source, uh, uh, open source commitments. Now, you can see you know, over the last uh, you know, few years, many very uh, famous companies would either change the licenses, you know, MongoDB, Elastic, uh, you know, HashiCorp, right, uh, you know, quite recently, just a couple of months, or uh, in case of Red Hat saying, well, we're not quite really changing the license, but we are kind of trying to, you know, stretch it uh, in a way so it's not very friendly. Uh, uh, to their open source community. Well, that is exactly the question of that conflict saying, hey folks, you know, we need uh, to uh, create more uh, shareholder value, right? And open source kind of with its, uh, you know, uh, value for everyone, don't lo uh, no pro uh, vendor locking and so on and so forth, doesn't quite uh, sit good with that. What I think we also can learn with that, right, or what you have to understand is what it's very hard to trust the corporate, uh, uh, corporate promises, right? I think MySQL is a very good example, and I use that because I was a part of that from the early, early days of, uh, of Johnny. The MySQL itself, and we were kind of a small company, with just, you know, a couple of uh, founders who are very opinionated, open source committed, that was, you know, one thing. Then, uh, as you may know, the uh, MySQL was uh, acquired by Sun. And at that time, Sun had the reputation of being a very open source friendly company, right? And the reason I remember talking to uh, their uh, founder of MySQL, Martin, saying, why would you sell to Sun? He says, well, you know what? Uh, I thought MySQL at Sun will be in a better hands than if it were to be public company because they have such a strong open source commitment. But guess what? A couple of years later, Sun is acquired by a company which uh, has, uh, by Oracle, right, which has a little bit different open source uh, uh, reputation, right? And that is, uh, the, I think, the question of the open source and the corporate commitments, like, well, even if the people you talk to, if you have a very committed open source founders, they may not be one taking decisions uh, in the future. And that is reality. And hey. That is reality even for, uh, uh, for Percona, right? As, uh, uh, right? I'm not saying what we are in, immune in, in uh, any case. What is also interesting in this case is what, that, uh, about how companies talk about that. Some companies, and you know what? I'm not a big fan of MongoDB with SSPL, but what I like in this case is they are actually very direct. The open source would say, hey, you know what? They never kind of believed in open source to begin with. That was a good marketing strategy. Right, and that is why, uh, you know, when it didn't see, suit us anymore, we changed the license to SSPL. Cool. Now there are some other people. They say, "Well, guys, you know what? We are doubling out, doubling down on open. What is it about? Well, this is about uh, Elastic Ditch and open source license, right? And I think that is a very 
common in that kind of corporate uh, talk, right? I don't think it's only about open source, but many other things. But hey, guys, yes, it may look to you like we are screwing you, but you know, that is in your interest. Believe us, we have your interest in mind. It's have nothing to do with our stock price or bonuses. It's all about you guys. Well, so what is about uh, open source and where it is like a great in practice? I think the open source is great for driving software adoption, right? And it's especially valuable in the early stage. Many companies, right, would not really be able to get that uh, up from the ground in the early stage where they can, uh, you know, uh, get enough money uh, to hire professional public relation team, marketing, and so on and so forth, sales, right, and really drive adoption more conventional matters. Right, where open source, where I would say property license, on the other hand, is much better at extracting the value. Right, let's say, hey guys, so you can uh, say, well, you know, if you use this software for any way, you have to pay according to whatever, right, and uh, you have uh, nowhere, uh, nowhere to run, right. And I think in the company priorities, often those change, right, in the early stage, it's often about, hey, how we can drive adoption. In the later stage, that uh, get, gets a lot more about, hey, how we can monetize the value. Another thing I wanted to, t to touch on quickly is uh, this question I see people uh, raise a lot about, oh, people are changing the license, right? Are those changes even legal? Well, of course we are, with big corporations, with, uh, with you know, lawyers which allow them to do that, stu uh, that stuff, right? I think the question in about is where they're ethical and where they uh, break any implicit and explicit promises. In the open source space, right, the members of community really contribute a lot to the project success. It is uh, code, but also in many cases that is the time and effort to, you know, to help that project to succeed, right? And they do that, well, they're also kind of selfish, right? They want to make sure what uh, the project grows, becomes better, and they can continue to use it on the same terms. And if you change that terms, well, of course, they uh, uh, feel that is not quite ethical uh, as a relationship to them, right? I think that is where a lot of uh, uh, license change uh, issues come about. Here is also an interesting thing to, to consider. One thing I love about databases, we have this DB engines uh, uh, website, which sort of like a measures the curve of the popularity of a given database. And this is uh, elastic, right? What you can see is what it was growing rapidly, right? And then at some time they did uh, uh, change to their non-open source license. It uh, became kind of flattened and really even kind of going uh, down a little bit, so there is an interesting correlation here. I'm not quite sure, right, and cannot claim where they started to kind of uh, go down because they ditched open source, or they actually recognized they reach a saturation point, they cannot grow adoption anymore, and they just need to get more people to pay, pay more, and pay wherever they want to do it or not, right? But I think a correlation here is quite um, interesting. Now, uh, the thing, as I mentioned a few times here, I think in the early stages of uh, success, a lot depends on the community involvement, and then uh, at a later stage, a lot uh, more uh, often becomes from, I think, like conver com commercial or more uh, conventional sales and uh, marketing motions. Okay. This is what we talk about with, I think, a common uh, approach and, uh, and uh, kind of corporate finite open source, right? But is there are some other approaches? And I think there are. There are a number of very successful open source projects which have the nonprofit foundation-based ownership, right? You think about Linux, Kubernetes, Postgres. It's not like there are no commercial vendors in those ecosystems. They are, right? But the project itself is uh, controlled by their uh, uh, foundation. And then we have a multiple competing vendors, right? Like for example, for Linux, we have uh, Red Hat, Suzy, Ubuntu, Canonical, right? And a whole bunch of others. 
And that, I think, it gives the product a lot of stability and safety. Because you know what? If something happens to Red Hat, you know, let's say they fuck up even more than they did uh, uh, recently, right? And they, you know, just go out of business. Guess what? Five years later, Linux will continue going and will just forget about Red Hat and their space will be, uh, you know, taken by, uh, by somebody else's, right? I think that is what the multi-vendor stability gives us. What is important in this case, uh, I think also I think, is a governance, right? We want to make sure what the governance happens in the interest of an ecosystem in large. Foundation alone is not enough, right? And one example uh, I want to, uh, I can have here is their uh, MariaDB foundation. Yes, it is a foundation, but you know, it's kind of uh, have a thing set up, so it's mostly benefit their uh, MariaDB, uh, MariaDB corporation. Right, and uh, the governance is kind of set up what uh, the foundation does or does not certain things uh, to put corporation in the best position to monetize a project. Right, well that is not very good, right? There are some other ecosystems as well where you would say the board is almost completely controlled by a single corporate entity. Not a good thing, right? We want to make sure what the governance is set up, what the, what the project is driven to uh, for their interest of their uh, ecosystem at large. With that, we often talk about open source as it relates to source code, but I think when we talk about the ownership of that entity, we need to make sure it's both a source code, a trademarks, and then also like a, a, of a distribution, right? Because, well, uh, you know, what is MySQL is, for example? Well, for many people, it is wherever you go to, you know, mysql.com, right, and get from there, that is what MySQL is, right, or whatever that project, and you need to, uh, need to mm, uh, uh, make sure that those distribution channels, whether that's your website or, you know, what else, like GitHub uh, and stuff, right, is owned by that entity, so they can be, again, governed and managed in the interest of their uh, ecosystem as large. Now, we already spoke uh, about community, and it's important for successful open source project, but I think uh, it is not just one community, but a three different community which you all want to be successful for open source project to be successful. One is, of course, user project, right? Hey, if nobody cares about our product, no, nobody uses it, well, nothing else matters. Then, you also want to have a contributor community, right? The project is much more stable uh, in this case, if it's uh, more than one entity has knowledge of a source code and contributes to that. Like as, as I mentioned with uh, Linux, right? So uh, you, you don't have a risk concentration if something happens to a vendor, right? We just decide to fork a project and, you know, they uh, take their uh, resources elsewhere and the project uh, uh, fails. But I think what is also important is a vendor community, right? And what that I mean by that is a pro is a people who are making a uh, business, right, uh, which relates to, uh, to this project. For example, why PostgreSQL uh, ecosystem is very successful? Because there are thousands and thousands of small companies worldwide making money at Postgres, right? And you can see every single week there is a probably, you know, several events happening on Postgres somewhere in the world, right? That is amazing, that would be very hard for, uh, for a corporation kind of to, uh, uh, to replicate, right? They can do some very big events uh, somewhere, right, or a couple of years, but not that kind of grassroots uh, things. And typically people who have a business to be had, right, these are who invest and organize in those events and so on and so forth, right, because that's uh, hard. So I think uh, one of the interesting things which is happening right now is that people come to understand you know, that it's not just about the open source, but uh, we need to look at the open source which is uh, governed by the corporation and governed by uh, some sort of non-profit in the interest of the whole ecosystem. So they are uh, actually you know, different. The other thing I want to uh, mention, and I think that is another uh, challenge right now, is their uh, language. Now, if you think about a lot of their open source forks, it's a very kind of black and white uh, situation. Like, well, you know what? 
if it is not open source, then it is this nasty proprietary software. Well, reality, of course, is uh, a little bit more co complicated. If somebody develops a project and wants to release some stuff with non-compete open source license, right, which, well, you know, like other uh, other SPL, for example, they say, well, you know what, our stuff is not as restricted as what Oracle does, where you cannot even, you know, like a publish benchmarks of a, of a database, right? It's a different thing, but you guys, uh, 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 trying to push it to call it proprietary, so instead we want you to redefine what the open source means. Reality, I think, is what we do have is a shade of gray, right, in this case, or like a spectrum, right, ranging from your kind of a classical proprietary software when all, dry, all rights are reserved, right, to their, uh, uh, really their you know, public domain and a permissive open source license where you can use it if uh, a little, if any restrictions, right? And uh, there is our source available has a place for that, right? Which is, I would say, uh, a lot better for consumers than your classic proprietary licenses, but not as good uh, as, a, as an open source, right? And I am uh, uh, really hoping what we are going to get a better understanding uh, in the ecosystem of that different and a better language to describe that. So we are not trying to redefine what open source means, <laughs> but also give a language for people who are not quite ready to embrace the open source commitment to, to, uh, to uh, deal with that. Okay. The next topic to cover uh, about the state of open source is the open source and the cloud, right? And I think the people uh, uh, often talk about that in the context, oh my gosh, the open source vendors, they're just, you know, killing the clou uh, uh, cloud vendors, killing the open source. Well, one thing I think about the open source, like a quote I like, is what the open source is not the business model, right? There are many models you can pursue with open source software. And what is happening is what the cloud is killing some open source business models, right? Like, well, uh, and guess what, right? I think in any industry, you often have some, you know, big changes, right? Like, guess what? We had the transportation industries with horses. Well, you know, they had to be replaced with something else <laughs> at large, right? But uh, uh, the industry uh, uh, continued. Now, if you think about the cloud, I think the cloud and open source actually can be very good uh, used, to, uh, used very well together. There is a lot of very cool conveniences of what the cloud, pro, uh, cloud provides, but you can also use a cloud in a way what uh, uh, you do not uh, uh, lock in and generate a lot of value in their, uh, uh, for the open source software. Like I uh, highlight uh, here, if you look at the, uh, what the Cloud Native Foundation uh, does, you know, providing that uh, you know, platform which you can run at variety of public cloud, private clouds, uh, you know, on-prem, on the edge, uh, which I think is, uh, uh, is fantastic. I also wanted at this point to give a uh, shout out to our host here, uh, uh, PinCap, in uh, their approach to open source. Right. I think what is very cool is what a lot of uh, op software, what uh, Kingpack produce, is uh, is open so is uh, open source, right? And you can actually run a successful o uh, the open source deployments, right? It's not the open source crippleware, right? As uh, uh, some companies uh, like to release, right? I think uh, what the Pink Hub has been even uh, doing more stuff with, uh, you know, TaiKV and Chaosmas donated to CNCF community. That is kind of that step, so next step, right? Those can be governed, you know, in the mm, interest of ecosystem at large, independently of PinCap's uh, uh, corporate interest. And that is, of course, a very, uh, mm, you know, uh, gutsy move. The contribution, that is an also another thing which are accepted and encouraged. Not all the companies uh, uh, do that, right, because it requires work, it is hard, and especially for folks who pursue open core or similar models, they may say, well, you know, we are not going to accept contributions because it just, 
we don't want that piece to be uh, open source. And I mentioned about the CNCF. That is a very large uh, found, uh, uh, organization with a lot of contributors. And what's very interesting for me to see what for last 10 years, last decade, uh, PINCAP fits in the top 10 their uh, largest mm, uh, contributors, right? And uh, it is the only company of its size, right, in that top 10. The most would be somebody's like, you know, Amazons and Googles and, you know, massively uh, much larger companies. Okay. Well, let me uh, finish up by talking about the future. And I think if you think about the future of open source, it's going to be uh, increasingly, uh, is increasingly uh, uh, polarized, right? Because we do have those really forming those like a two angles of it open source. One is you think about the commercial part. We're saying, hey guys, we want to use the open source, right, and push the boundaries, but actually we want to uh, have as many of their proprietary software levels, right, uh, under our control so we can, uh, uh, we can, you know, monetize better versus more of a non-profit community open source, which is a lot about the open source values. And again, I think as people will understand the, uh, the difference more, there is likely to be even more, uh, uh, you know, uh, po polarizations uh, in between. So, in terms of my call to action to finish things up, well, I would encourage you to uh, learn the open source uh, for real versus their open source tactics I just used uh, to make it sounds good. Like, hey, we are producing open source compatible software, right, or uh, things like that, uh, like that. I would also encourage you to open to contribute to open source community because a lot of open source software uh, is great because of larger community involvement, and that doesn't have to be you know just code, right? I think that uh, is a also very important thing. You don't have to be developer to contribute. That is especially important for the databases because uh, you know, uh, frankly, databases are very complicated pieces, and very few engineers are really able to contribute the good quality code for database kernel. But there is a lot of other things uh, you can do in the ecosystem. And of course, uh, help to spread uh, the world. Uh, the last slide, in this case, I, I like to uh, show is this. This is the slide from Bruce uh, Momjan's presentation who talks about, uh, about uh, Postgres and uh, uh, about how the open source and proprietary software tends to develop, right? In many cases, you can see what uh, in the early stages, proprietary software is, you know, much better in terms of features, performance, whatever, uh, and the open source software may be a toy or not existence, but over time, uh, we can see the open source uh, uh, wins. We saw that uh, in, uh, for example, uh, operating system, you know, any Solaris users? Okay, yeah. Well, not many, right? <laughs> Compared to Linux, right? Or you can think about the database space uh, where, uh, you know, proprietary databases are uh, increasingly minorities. Yeah. Well, BSD is also open source. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Well, uh, and with that, that's uh, all I uh, had to say, and I'll hang out in the conference. If you guys want to chat about open source, I'm always happy to. Thank you.